So what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just set the stage a little bit and share with you why I think this is an absolutely critical time in this industry. Why I think that the whole idea of entrepreneurialism, uh, the whole idea of innovation is without a doubt uh, the key to the future. And then I'm going to talk to you about some of the things we see happening around us that are really driving uh, driving the innovation for us. So, uh, so let me begin with this. This is a, uh, a simple graph. You all can, can get your hands on this thing. Nothing magical to it, but I love to show it. Because one of the things it shows is, see, you can see the yield curve. There's 1990, 2000, 2010. Here we are in 2012, the worst time in the credit crisis. And then here you are today, August of 2015. And so you don't have to be a genius. You can see interest rates over a long period of time have been coming down. Um, just to put this in perspective, if you ran your insurance company at a 100 combined ratio back in 1990 with that yield curve, you could have a return on equity that was well into the teens, right? You could get a 14, 15, 16% return on equity. It's called on average a 16% return on equity. And today, is that yellow line, that August of 2015 line, the same 100% combined would get you a return on equity well below 10%, something closer to 7%. So anyone who thinks, I'm just going to underwrite to an underwrite profit, interest rates don't matter, super, keep thinking that. Um, but you're not right. Uh, <laughs> so, in the context of where this plays out, different different lines of business are impacted differently by this by this particular issue. So I'm going to show you. This is an AIG deal. Again, I'm, I'm giving you a perspective of where it's coming from. Shortest tail line of business. Really, fundamentally, we're dealing with in the commercial space is property. It's got an average duration of about a year. And so while interest rates in 1990 were giving me something like 7% and today they're giving me something like almost nothing for a max one year duration interest rate. So the truth of the matter is I'm getting about 700 basis points less in investment income, in interest income, when I get to collect those premiums and hold on to them until the time I pay out. The truth of the matter is it's only for one year. I can live with it. It's not the end of the world. I just have to underwrite my property business to an underwriting profit. That story gets more complicated as you look at other lines of business. This is the same story with primary casualty on a claims made basis. The average duration is four years. I'm earning 600 basis points year after year after year after year for four years from the time I collect the premium until the average time that I pay out the claim. If you move that on to workers' compensation, primary workers' compensation, you're talking about something more like six years. Year after year after year after year after year after year, I'm earning less investment income since we only make money through our underwriting results and through investment income. This is a big challenge for us. And the story gets more complicated when I move you to excess casualty on the current basis, and then the granddaddy of them all for us is naked standalone excess workers' compensation, uh, where the tail on that risk, the average duration of that risk, is something like 15 years. So we have broadly speaking exited the excess workers compensation line of business. We've done that years ago. And why? You return me back to the investment um, results that I had in 1990 and I'll revisit the topic with you. But today, when I'm going to earn 600 basis points less investment income year after 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 year. Um, it's a losing proposition. We cannot underwrite that sufficiently to an underwriting profit to be able to be sure that we can have a sufficient win-win situation that's long-term sustainable between AIG and our, and our clients. This is not just a U.S. phenomenon. That was U.S. yield curve. This is the global stage. So I've shown for you Japan, which is that bottom blue line. Germany, the UK, and Canada. And while every country is different, fundamentally what you're seeing here is uh, this is something that's playing out on the international stage. So this is not just a macroeconomic event affecting the United States, it's affecting the entire world. For anybody who says, that's still all really interesting, I just focus on making sure that I underwrite to an underwriting profit. Again, I think that's very interesting, but I want to show you one more interesting observation then. For all of you who are still doubters. These combined ratios will get you approximately the same return on equity. A 100% combined ratio in the United States of America will get you about the same return 
as a 111 combined ratio in Argentina. Meaning, I can underwrite to an underwriting loss in Argentina and still have a 7% return on equity because it's a highly inflationary economy and interest rates are higher and your return on your investments are different than they are in the US. But if you take that over to Greece, which is a deflationary economy, who quite frankly would disconnect from the euro if they could to be able to adjust their own currency uh, and their own kind of um, monetary policy, but they can't. And because of that, they're a deflationary economy. And did you know you need to underwrite your policy to an 80% combined with a 20% underwriting profit to get to the same fundamental result and fundamental return on equity as you're getting from the United States of America? And again, this is just a AIG perspective. But I'm just trying to tell you this is a macroeconomic global imperative that says if you don't change, you're not going to win this game. So, out of all of this, I think has emerged a new landscape. Um, there's a dark cloud and a light cloud. I'm going to let you guess which one I think is the dark cloud and the light cloud. But fundamentally, um, there's a big spectrum of uh, insurance solutions that are available to our clients. And quite frankly, everything in between. <coughs> You can be on the right side, you can be on the left side, you can be anywhere in between. And quite frankly, I'll also tell you, I actually think it's all okay. Meaning, I actually think it's just all reality. There's always going to be solutions on the right side of this equation, solutions on the right side of the equation, and companies in between, big and little. And so when is the right side and when is the left side? Um, on the left side, I think it's really a lot of the new capital that we see, alternative capital coming into the marketplace. Generally speaking, product-centric, meaning, generally speaking, not able to provide a holistic solution to a client, not multi-product solutions, but instead, good capital. So there's a lot of capital. By the way, something like $60 billion worth of capital in this alternative space. It has something like doubled over the course of the last three years. It's getting big, and it's probably here to stay. And so what is it? Lots of capital, pretty cost effective. There's very little infrastructure to this capital. Very little infrastructure to the capital makes it a cost effective solution. Generally speaking, going to play at the excess layers at additional capacity. Um, it's going to be reasonably narrow focused on a particular product, on a particular niche, not a multi line solution, um, and almost always focused on simple plain vanilla version transfer. That's what you're seeing on one side of the spectrum. On the other side um, is where I would say we are trying to be, and I know many companies, including many companies here in this room, are trying to be, which is just trying to differentiate from that. And we believe that the differentiation in this space comes from the ability to use innovation and science, the entrepreneurial element of what I'm going to talk about with you today. It comes, it comes from being able to have the infrastructure to deal with the claims. It comes from having the underwriting expertise. It comes from having a global network. We operate in 200 countries around the world. You, that's not free. It's not cost. It's not very low cost. It's actually high cost, but it's a totally different value proposition is the message I'm trying to do. Uh, a lot of work around loss control and engineering. Um, and by the way, Back in the day, maybe about a dozen years ago, I would have told you that our primary advantage is we've got a lot of capital fueling a great risk appetite that's highly rated capital. I'd say to you, we still have that today. Um, I just put that somewhere way down at the bottom of the list and say, it's interesting, but many other companies have that too. It's the things above that that really make the difference. Um, so I think the big challenge here is that innovation in science, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Um, this is your traditional iceberg. Uh, so if you haven't seen one lately, just a refresher. 90% of the iceberg sits below the surface. In my opinion, again, speaking to you from my Philadelphia Eagles phrase lunatic uh, perspective, as an industry, we spend way too much of our time at the top of the iceberg. We're trying to get to the razor edge, narrow answer on what's the lowest premium, what's the right amount of premium, which is the piece that everyone can see above the waterline. I actually believe that innovation and entrepreneurialism continues to drive what's happening in this industry. The real focus of how we can drive value to our clients, and quite frankly, the focus of the industry needs to be on reducing the total cost of risk, and quite frankly, in the future, 
I think you'll see us continue to focus more and more on more on reducing the costs that are beneath the surface. How can we reduce? How can we reduce the total cost of risk without it being just about the premium? Um, that is really a big piece of where it is that we're trying to take this picture. And from my perspective, um, if we don't innovate, um, we're going to go the way of the dinosaur, and we will be extinct.